What's up guys, Wendy City Bassin here. Hey, I want to tell you about something exciting I did recently. Something that I, you guys have really never seen. So you don't know much about me. You just know that I love to fish. So, Kenny over at Upscale Lures reached out and wanted to do an interview. <sighs> never done an interview before. It was really weird, but it was kind of cool. And so he recently posted that video on his channel. And so I wanted to upload that same video so you guys could see it too. And if you haven't, make sure you go check out Kenny's page, Upscale Lures. Make sure to give him a subscribe. I'll leave a link into his channel below. I'll also leave a link to his Instagram account. Let's just say it was awkward. I was uncomfortable, but I kind of loved every minute of it. It was neat. So without further ado, guys, here is my interview with Kenny at Upscale Lures. And I am Kenny in today's episode number nine of my series of fishing interviews I know it's been a minute but we are gonna get right back into it if you can please tell us your name and the name of your YouTube channel so my name is Mike my YouTube channel is Windy City Bassin no G at the end my Instagram page also Windy City Bassin no G at the end uh, Facebook Twitter I've got those but I really don't use those that much so YouTube Instagram those are the main ones I created my channel to start documenting my own fishing adventures and that's that's really it um, I didn't really start out with the idea of creating content to educate or entertain or do any of those things I really wanted a way to document my fishing adventures beyond just taking a picture and I thought man video seems really cool it's these GoPros are popping up everywhere why not why not give it a shot so um, but then kind of as a the channel progressed. I've really gotten to enjoy editing and filming and um, the community uh, of YouTube fishing is, is just phenomenal. And so I've learned things. I'm hoping I'm teaching some people things. Um, it just, it's a great, great community. What book has greatly influenced your life? And if no book comes to mind, what person, podcast, or YouTube channel have you recommended the most? I'm not really much of a book reader. I'm, I'm very driven by physical activity. And so if I'm sitting still reading a book, I feel like I'm not doing something. Um, so really, there's two YouTube channels that I uh, would say I've recommended more than anything. John B, number one. I mean, I think he's kind of started this whole wave. I mean, he may not have been the official person who started it, but He's done more for YouTube fishing than anyone else. And uh, I really love his style of videos, um, the way he tells a story and it progresses throughout the video. Um, and you know, his quality of videos has just gotten so much better. Um, I see him actually at some point pushing beyond the scope of YouTube into somehow television, filming for television, something like that. I don't know. Um, but I would definitely go check him out. If for some reason you, you're watching this video and never have seen his videos, make sure to go check him out. Um, number two is a little bit outside of fishing, but I love, I love this channel, uh, Demolition Ranch. I love everything Matt stands for. He's a veterinarian. Christina's a veterinarian. Um, you know, he's got a dream life, living on a ranch, gets to do all these fun things that I think that a lot of us outdoors people, uh, would aspire to, to try and do. So I think his, his channel is just something really, really neat. So. Go check it out. He's got a couple channels. He's got Demolition Ranch, he's got Off the Ranch, and he's got Vet Ranch. Um, so if you don't like veterinarian stuff, ignore Vet Ranch. But I think it's interesting just because I hear about it from Christina all day long too. What fishing gear, equipment, or lure purchase of $100 or less has made the most positive impact in the last 12 months? This is a trickier question, and I'm, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to give you three answers. So my first would be Mystery Tackle Box, you know, right there. Um, I've had a subscription for longer than 12 months, so maybe that's a bit cheating. And for a full year subscription, it costs more than $100. But uh, I think that there's no better way of, of learning and getting outside of your comfort zone when fishing than using something like this and testing yourself and trying new baits and learning new techniques. And uh, it's, it's definitely helped me progress as an angler. For sure, and you know, for one month, um, that Pro Box costs twenty-five dollars, and um, you can actually get it for cheaper than that with a promo code. So, um, number two, I'm gonna plug another company again here, but I really, really, really like this jig. Um, I searched for a while for one jig company that I could stand behind, believe in, and just 
go back to. And John over at Dem Jigs has been awesome. Um, one, he's got an awesome place. He's a local guy, which I love supporting local, and he makes a phenomenal product. Um, his his jigs just stand out a little bit above some of the other ones that I've used, and the price is reasonable. Cool local guy that I can go chat with, um, and maybe him and I are going to be fishing uh, this year, so we'll, we'll see. We've been talking about that. So uh, if you haven't tried one of the jigs before, definitely go give Dem Jigs a look. Um, let John know I sent you over because honestly, I, I, I want to spread the word for his business. It's, it's a nice, nice jig. And third, so third, the Huddleston. Um, last year was my first year that I got into the, the swim bait game and uh, I really didn't know what I was doing. I got a bunch of different swim baits and, and just wanted to test out um, what I had. And so about the middle of the year, I finally t decided to tie on a Huddleston bluegill swim bait. And I thought maybe that might get bit in some of these ponds. I live in Illinois and I'm fishing ponds most of the time. And they're bigger fish, but they're not big fish. Um, not like California, Florida, Southern Lakes, Texas. So um, I was amazed at how quickly the Huddleston bluegill swim bait, that soft swim bait, got bit. And it really created a, a level of comfort with throwing swim baits. I was shocked at how small fish were actually eating that thing. Um, I went through a few, few through the year and um, and Halston reached out at some point and was just like, hey, I'm going to give you a couple more. You're doing great. Um, glad to have another person in the swim bait game, which is just awesome of a company like that. So I uh, I want to thank Halston for, for sure for building up my confidence in swim baits because going into 2018 now, you're going to see me throw a lot more. So. That's it. So three things. How has a failure, big or small, set you up for a later success? And do you have a favorite failure of yours? Maybe I'm just really lucky um, because I can't really think of a big failure that I've had in life. Um, you know, I think that if anything, and they're small, small, small failures uh, in the grand scheme of things, but I would say, you know, getting up in the morning, and having an idea for filming a video and wanting to do a certain tactic or tackle a specific item and, or go fish this pond and catch this type of fish or whatever you know being in this YouTube business game um, albeit a very small part of it um, you really have to be open to things not going your way um, I can have all the intentions and the weather and everything looks like it's gonna work out great and yet when I get out to the pond, the fish aren't biting. And so I think it's helped change my mindset a little bit that I can, I can push through those things because they're, they're really in the grand scheme of things, no big deal. Um, we'll figure something out. So If you could write anything on your own billboard and put it anywhere, what would it say? Whew, good question. Um, you know, it sounds a little stupid, but I'd just say never give up on your passions. And I'm going to label fishing as a passion of mine. Some people it's a hobby, some people it's a sport, some people it's a business. Um, fishing is not my business. And I kind of like it that way to an extent. Uh, I think once something becomes a little bit of a business, you can lose your passion for it. Whereas if it's a hobby, you can still have that passion. And so I love fishing. I mean, I would literally fish every single day if I could. And uh, going into this time where the weather's going to be warming up, I will be fishing almost every day. Not filming every day, but I will be fishing almost every day. In fact, after this video, we're going to go film, <laughs> film a video and uh, hopefully catch some good, good fish. So I got, I got a couple ideas for what I want to do today. So I think that that's important. Never give up on your passion. Where would I put that? I would put that all over my house. Um, I think, you know, wherever you go first thing in the morning, you want that right in front of you. So... Um, I think it's an important thing for me to remember is that no matter how busy I get in life, no matter all the things that are going on, don't push fishing away because it's your passion. I've done that once before. I did it and I didn't realize how much I missed it until I got back into it. And so, um, guys, never give up on your passion. What is one of the best investments you have ever made? It could be an investment of time, money, or energy. Well, getting back into fishing, I just mentioned it before. I took a long break from fishing when I went out to college. 
I made the excuse. There's no lakes. I don't need my fishing stuff with me. I don't have time. Starting a career, college, all these different uh, sports and clubs, and I didn't think that I could do it. And and so I gave up fishing for almost 10 years, which saying that now seems just insane to me. I don't know how I did that, but um, so getting back into fishing when I moved back up towards Chicago suburbs, I told myself. I want to do this again. I want to get back into fishing and I want to be better than I was when I was younger because when I was younger I was also extremely passionate about fishing. Um, and so getting back into it and trying this YouTube thing, uh, getting into social media has all been new to me and I think that it's been a very rewarding experience. I've met a lot of great people um, and created some relationships that uh, I never would have had if I hadn't got into this this YouTube fishing social media craze that's going on right now. Mike, for the next question, uh, what is a unusual lure or absurd fishing tactic that you love to use? <sighs> I had to think about this one because I don't think I do anything crazy. Um, I will say, and I get a lot of heat for this. I, I mean, I really get a lot of heat for it, but I use an inline spinner more than most, especially people who consider themselves like serious anglers, they kind of laugh at the fact that uh, I'm fishing with an inline spinner. They think it's beneath them. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. I actually have some, uh, some, some right here with me. I mean, I got a whole box of, of these little spinners. I use those all the time. I think that they are such a versatile bait. They catch so many species. Um, I don't know why anyone wouldn't use them. They may be a lure that is easier to use, but that doesn't make it a bad lure or make you less of an angler for using it. So I would go give those a shot. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. I think that that is one of the best lures, period. And it is so underutilized because, I don't know, it's got this stigma around it. People kind of like... When you fish with live bait and you're talking with a, a guy who fishes with lures, they look at, down at that guy with live bait. I don't know why that is. Same thing with this one. It's like, that's the beginner one, a beginner lure, and, and it's really not, so. Mike, I agree with you completely on the inline spinner. I think totally that is a, you know, underutilized uh, fishing lure. Um, as you guys may know, that's what I mostly, I mainly make inline spinners. You know, there's something about it that just draw me to it. You know, uh, like Mike said, you you know you can catch such a variety of fish on them. I think they're pretty versatile. You know, you can just you can do a lot with them, and uh, fish them in more places than you than you think. You know, if you if you find the right way to fish them, you know, you can fish them in weeds. You know, not too heavy of weeds, but like the blade, it'll push the weeds away. I can fish it in rocky you know conditions. You just keep it off the bottom. Like you know, it can be done, and I think it. I think it is really, it can be really effective, and, and effective lure, and uh, um, like I got a few here, um, these are a little bit bigger, I use these for bass and pike, work amazing, and I do have a little bit smaller spinner, which I've caught everything from the I, smallies to the bass to pike, even snook on it, um, I do have a little uh, paragraph on the back here, um, just talking about Mike Iaconelli, about how he talks about when the fishing gets tough that uh, he has this panic box that he goes to and uh, one of the lures in there is a inline spinner and uh, he talks about the uh, the spinner um, let's see here it says uh, they are a better bait fish imitator than most lures and will catch everything that swims including bass and I think that's pretty cool that Mike Iaconelli um, you know, gives the spinner that much credit, you know, he, like he knows what the potential is um, of that, of the spinner, the inline spinner, you know, what it can do. Um, so I definitely think, I agree with you, I think that is a, you know, underutilized um, fishing lure that you just, you, you don't see being used, you know, you don't see it being used in the um, you know, especially in the bass realm, you know, you, you rarely see it. You know, everybody's throwing their plastics and crankbaits and all that stuff. You don't see the spinners. And, you know, before I, you know, go, go too long with this, um, 
I think that like a bucktail um, would be fantastic for like them giant bass. I, I've caught multiple bass on a full, you know, like a full size um, bucktail and uh, you know, they'll hit it, they'll take it down. Um, and I mean, it's, you know, it's, a th it's like a third half of their size. It's, it's quite amazing. Uh, but we'll we'll move on here to the next question. So for question, um, it is question number seven. Um, Mike, in the last three years, what uh, belief, behavior, or habit has most improved your life? That is 100% fishing. Um, you know, fishing in Chicago is defined by seasons, clear seasons. You've got a winter where you can only access fish via ice, really. You get a summer where you're sweating to death, and you've got a spring and a fall. They're going to be either super warm or super cold. And um, you know, making sure I have the time to fish year-round through all those different seasons and different styles of fishing, honestly, it keeps me sane. Um, it keeps me from going crazy. Uh, I, I just I love fishing that much, and I love to even think about fishing. So. Uh, this is my, my tackle game. I love old fishing lures, new fishing lures. I love, love everything about fishing. What advice would you give a smart, driven beginner angler trying to make it into the fishing world? I think right now there's no better time to get into the sport of fishing um, just because of how much is at our, ex at our fingertips. This, a phone has so much information on it. At any point in time, I could be out at a lake and I could just go to YouTube, go to Google, go to Instagram, go to wherever and find how to do something. If I want to learn how to fish a jerkbait, I type in a video. In fact, I just fi finished filming a video for how to fish a jerkbait. It's something that there's probably a hundred videos, if not a thousand videos on YouTube already on. If I want people's opinions on which bait is better, I can go to my phone. It's all right in front of us. The internet has made things so available. When I was a kid, I mean, you can't see this over there, but I've got a huge stack of old Bassmaster magazines. There was Bassin Magazine, there was In Fisherman, there was Field and Stream. That was the way to get information. Um, you need to be a, a member of some sort of magazine and uh, get a subscription once a month, and I'd wait for that wait for that magazine to come in every month um, you know wait for that Bass Pro Shops catalog to come in to find all the new baits and lures and uh, and now it's all at our fingertips so I would say if anything make sure to leverage your online resources go check out some of the bigger YouTube channels um, especially earlier in their careers on YouTube they made a lot more how-to videos I think Fluke Master is phenomenal at his ability to explain how um, to fish certain baits. In fact, he's one of the first people I ever watched on YouTube. What are bad recommendations or tips you hear about fishing? I really wasn't sure. Um, I couldn't think of any off the top of my head. Um, but I came up with maybe two, maybe. You know, I think overall people are generally good at recommending real quality things to people not just trying to lead them astray. So um, I would say you hear a lot of stick to what you're good at. I think that's not true in fishing. I think that in fishing you actually want to um, always keep what you're good at in your back pocket, but do all the things you're not good at. Uh, it's the only way to get better at an angler, as an angler. So I mean, one thing that I was never good at was, or I never really was comfortable with um, until maybe two, three years ago, was a chatterbait. Um, I never caught a fish on it. I felt no comfort level in it. One day, windy, I said, okay, conditions are right. I'm only going to throw this bait. That's all I'm going to do. And guess what? I slayed him. So uh, my comfort level went from zero to a hundred in one day. And that's what can happen when you try different styles of baits. And soon, you know, depending on the weather conditions, depending on anything, really, you can change up your tactics because you know or have a good chance of knowing what these fish might want rather than if you're just comfortable with fishing a jig and you just go through a jig every single day some days it works some days it doesn't well guess what that's because you are only fishing maybe what you're good at 
So the only other one that I could think of was Shopping Smart. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stupid stuff out in the industry, to be honest. Uh, you know, why on earth would anyone go spend $90,000 on a brand new Ranger bass boat? I don't get it. That's just insane. Um, you know, another one, if you're just fishing ponds, you know, you know I'm going to use Kleenex as a great example. If I need to go blow my nose, what am I going to go grab? I'm going to go grab a Kleenex. But that's not what it really is. It's a facial tissue. The same thing can be said for Senkos. Everyone describes a soft plastic stick bait as a Senko because they've cornered the name in that, in that genre. Well, guess what? You don't need to go get a Yamamoto Senko. You don't need to. For $8 for an 8-pack is craziness. And yeah, maybe they might be a little bit better quality, but are you going to try to cash in a $100,000 tournament? Probably not. Are you going to fish some ponds? Well, then maybe that $2 bag of 10 Yum Dingers or uh, a 100 pack of BPS, um, I can't even think of their name, they're, they're Stickos, is that it, Stickos? For $15 might make way more sense. So shop smart. Don't get pulled into some of the more gimmicky and expensive products. I mean, I do love Senkos, don't get me wrong, they're just very, very expensive. When you feel overwhelmed or unfocused, what do you think about or what do you do to get yourself back on track? This is the easiest question in the entire entire interview. When I feel overwhelmed, what do I think of that gets me on track? Fishing. I mentioned it kind of earlier when I'm busy at work and I've got, you know, just a million things on my plate. I immediately kind of think of, okay, when's the next time I'm going fishing? Is it tonight? Is it this weekend? What am I going to be throwing? What do I want to film? What do I want to target? Um, you know, are there any cool things that I can integrate into the video? Um, should I throw some different baits? Maybe I shouldn't go there. Maybe I should go somewhere else. And so I think that there is, uh, you know, so much that calms me down uh, via fishing. It just reduces the anxiety level, the stress that everyday life can create. When you think about the word successful, what person comes to mind and why? I got three people, sorry. John B., I said it earlier, I think he's... I think it's it's obvious and why we think he's successful is he's turned a YouTube fishing into a serious career for himself. And I congratulate him for it. I mean, it was a brilliant move. Um, you know, honestly, you know, dropping out of college, some people might say that was dumb. I think it was one of the smartest things he ever did. Uh, Lake Fork Guy. You know, Lake Fork Guy has had so many struggles, especially in the last year, and yet I look at him and I look at at him and OSG and their family, and I think this guy, yeah, he's got a lot of struggles, but um, you know, he should be truly blessed with where he is, um, and I know he is. I know he feels that way too, um, and I'm sure you know in those tough times he wonders, you know, why him? But you know, truly, he's got a beautiful wife, um, great family, um, and a a great business in front of him and I just love how he holds his head high delivers a great message to people um, so just a really really solid solid dude um, and this kind of goes into that solid dude category demolition ranch I'm gonna say Matt Carricker is just a solid dude if I live nearby I would have to try to be friends with him um, I just think that he you know the message he tries to portray is that every day you should get better at something uh, make yourself better and whether it's something small or something big, if you make yourself even that much slightly better today than you were yesterday, um, then you're going to go really far in life. And I think that's a phenomenal message. And something that I think we a lot of times forget is we get stuck in status quo. And yet I could just you know say today I want to learn how to cook something, and I'll just go do it. And I guess then tomorrow, guess what? I I've, I've learned something new. Um, I can go try some different fishing technique today, and I've learned something new. Um, that's what his channel is all about, what, what he speaks to. Uh, and despite all the fact that he's you know, shooting guns and has a great family and a beautiful ranch, and, and I mean, just all that fun stuff, cars, and uh, I don't know. He, he, he's a guy I aspire to a bit. Uh, Mike, what video of yours are you most proud of? And I will leave a link below so all my viewers, you guys can check that out. I don't know, I feel like a little bit of pride in every video for sure. Um, and they all take a little bit different process to getting to the end. But I would say maybe my, it's a shorter video, my, my uh, year-end recap.
for 2016, my RIP 2016, rest in peace. Um, I think that video has, n there's none of my voice, which you guys will probably like after this because you're probably tired of hearing about me. Um, but it's got a lot of what I would say are fairly sick edits, good beat, I mean, and it's quick. And it just kind of sums up what my channel is all about and you know, how much passion and energy I have for fishing. What is your most exciting project you are currently working on? or we'll be working on this year? Uh, well, oh gosh. I have, at any point in time, about a hundred ideas going through my head. Some of them are in this very room I'm working on. Um, I can't, I can't say. Um, and many of them will probably turn out to be absolutely nothing. But I'm hoping one or two of them actually turn out to be something. And so, I don't know, I'd say stay, stay tuned. Hopefully in 2018 we'll have well, some exciting fishing-related um, projects coming to you. We'll see. Do you have any last message, action, or challenge for my viewers? Yeah, you know, I mentioned it earlier, but uh, you know, if I had any last last message for you guys, Kenny, your viewers, I would say make today better than yesterday. Make yourself better today than you were yesterday. Do anything, even the smallest, slightest thing. To better yourself and if you do that every day you're gonna go really really far and it's a stupid corny honestly it's a corny message but I truly believe in that in that mindset so um, my last message to you guys Mike thank you so much for taking the time and doing the interview I really do appreciate it uh, if you could please tell us the best place to find you online and I'll leave all your links in the description page below so all my viewers and my fans out there you guys can find Mike in the description page below. I'm pretty active on YouTube. I mean, if you leave a comment, I'm gonna, I'm gonna either drop a like or comment back. Um, I, I appreciate you guys who are watching my videos so, so much. Um, other than YouTube, Instagram, by far I'm on Instagram every day. I'm usually posting once a day um, because I'm fishing every day. So um, definitely you know, drop me a DM, leave a comment on something, I'll get back to you. And uh, if there's something you feel like I should be following you, let me know. I will go check you out for sure. So those are probably the two best places to find me. Windy City Bassin, all one word, no G at the end. Um, and that's it. You guys still watching? If you want to check out my first Fishing Friday newsletter uh, where we do a lure giveaway every single month. So you have 12 chances a year to win a lure giveaway. Uh, plus I do a little bit of news about my company Upscale Lures and we do a little bit of news about fishing from around the world. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Um, super easy to sign up. The link is below in the description page. Uh, super easy to sign up there, say that. Anyways, I really do appreciate it guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the subs and all the likes. Um, it really does help uh, support my channel and uh, you know, just it helps me you know, stay motivated to keep pushing these videos out. Um, thank you guys so much, and we'll see you guys next time. Well, guys, if you stuck through it to the end, you're a true champ. You absolutely should be subscribed. <laughs> and you should be hitting that little notification bell too, because you sat through a lot of painful answers. My true answers, my beliefs, but didn't necessarily come out smoothly out of my mouth you know what I'm saying I'm not really that great in front of a camera if you couldn't tell already but I've watched my videos before thanks so much for watching guys I appreciate it if you want to know more about me I'll leave a comment below make sure to hit that like button and until we meet again this is Windy City Bassin signing